but it's there. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I immediately think, um, Sandy, when you're talking about customization, like, do you people not remember MySpace? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Do, do you want MySpace auto- was so awesome. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how to, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben Stone here in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, joining you each and every week uh, like I do. But that, that is the Canadian, the only Canadian we have ever had on the show and will ever be on the show, one Jordan Swang. And joining us from hey. Canada, down there in the bottom, is one Sandy Martin, because Pedro died again. He does that sometimes. You know, you're just like mm-hmm. chilling out and Pedro's like, I, I, I'm going to die. But together with you, Shat Realm Dynamic, watching us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Yeah, I still have an improvement. Canes. Two canes, the best canes, baby. So what's up? What's new? We got anything uh, special going on? I know I have been hard at work. Work hard. Uh, getting everything recorded oh, for the, uh, check it out. The new hotness from EVGA, the XR1 Non-Blinkatron Light Edition. So this is an interesting piece of kit because this is going to bring 4K pass-through UHD, 2160p, USB 3, and it's uh, 1080p 60. It can handle that out of the box for under 70 bucks. So Pretty good. Yeah. Wow. And I know, I know, you know, I've done videos on other less qualified devices, and that's one of the problems. As soon as you start getting down to like 50 and 40 it's rng on what you're going to get and at least from evga you'll probably uh get the right thing every single time but i found something interesting when i was deboxing it it's like unboxing it but you get out the screwdriver stay tuned for the video for that i'll have that up uh like a little snack pick probably tomorrow afternoon if not on monday how about you sandman anything fun uh been doing a lot of uh reading of comics lately because we're trying to get ready for the next episode of the shop so we're trying to avoid doing dc and marvel stuff just because they get enough hype as it is so uh we're trying to stick to image idw dark horse and a lot of the the lesser publishers D- boom dinamite yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> so we're we're trying to we're trying to look at give some light to a lot of the more indie comics and a lot of the Self publishers, so you, yeah, you, just you, doing you, a lot you got of research. A, got any recommendations for people to check out? Ooh, uh, Dark Arc is probably my favorite one right off the top of my head, and that one is a image comic, and it's pretty much you have the uh, Noah's Ark, but at the same time, Satan made another Ark, and it's filled with all the mythological creatures. And uh, like vampires, werewolves, unicorns, of all things, are on that. <laughs> so it's a it's a pretty crazy story because you have struggles on both both ships, and the two ships are never allowed to meet. Mm, okay, interesting. Yeah. So on a scale of one to ten, what what's a shop? Uh, the shop is our YouTube channel. There we go. YouTube, yeah, YouTube forward slash the shop Hydra. Uh, and, uh, yeah, there we talk about comics. Well, that's all we talk about really is comics and, uh, talk about the latest news and comics and stuff like that. And that's where I've been most of the time hiding out, you know, mm. outside of dealing with personal issues. Here. So <laughs> who doesn't, you got to tune in for the dulcet tones of that HVAC system. Yes. Oh my God. See, and thank God for you for doing the the sound editing for the one episode because like oh, it's been a nightmare. I'm already have like I'm half deaf and it's already a nightmare to try to do sound editing and trying to get that HVAC out. So there's so much I need to learn about sound editing. A little bit. I learned some things when I was trying to get that critter out. Jordan, oh, I- <laughs> have you learned anything, buddy? No. Good. Le- learning, learning things are, is for Achievement swears. unlocked. Yeah. You, you, one, one, at a certain point, you have learned everything that you need to know, and accruing new knowledge is entirely pointless, so just be stagnant, always. Um, that, that's brilliant advice, life advice, if you've ever heard it. But mm-hmm. one thing that's never stagnant, even though you might believe it would be after receiving so many beatings. 
beatings. N- nine years worth of beatings? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it can't, you can't really call it standing water because it's not water. It's just like horse pate. You could probably <laughs> sell it at a fancy restaurant for a good amount of money. It's the Steam Linux update. There we go. Oh, no this week because it suck. Um, damn it, damn it, Pedro. It's his fault. It is. <laughs> it's all Pedro's fault. Pedro's gonna yeah, throw him under, under the bus. All the buses, yep. man. Yeah, we got buses, all the buses parked up out back in a line it's, man. It, it's like it's like evil can evil's gonna jump all the buses and then we're gonna drive them one at a time under what i'm pa- trying to convey is we're gonna be fucking up some suspension tonight all right so <laughs> here's what we get this this is kind of interesting you know uh steam chan has turned 18 and can now vote 18 years ago that is right 2003 That's september crazy. 12th Steam was released, and uh, to everyone's excitement, it completely fractured the Counter Strike community. Yeah. Oh, fu- fuck yeah! I mean, I mean, once upon a time, it's like, oh man, we have all these mods on these servers, and now CS one point six brings out new updates every every couple of days, and it just breaks our mods. And ah, and now now Steam Workshop exists, and it's just like mm-hmm. what what. Now it's like, is the mod not available on Steam? Well, it's useless to me then. I was reading through that. It was kind of fun watching, uh, which is reading and learning about uh, like the hoops people were going through to make sure that they didn't play CSGO on Steam. Like mm-hmm. they, they kept that along, alive a lot longer than I thought they were. But you know what? I didn't begin using Steam until like Skyrim, where I made that video with wine, and I was kind of one and done oh, with that. Oh, oh, 09. But actually, oh, yeah, it was probably earlier than that, man. Oh, 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 oh 11, 11, 11, 11. That was the Skyrim release date, yeah? Sure. Mm. Sure. Uh, which one? Uh, <laughs> the, 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 I think the, the first one. Zing. But, yeah, uh, I like it. you know, when Linux came on Linux, but hey, we tried out from day one since we were doing a show, figured might as well. But, the naysayers, just going back with the history and reading through the comments sections of, um, I, I initially saw this in our Steam, and of course I've read it in other places, but, you know, just the, the mindset of 2003, because who would download a game when you had the CD or DVD? What type of, like, why are you going to waste all your time, man? And it wasn't, we weren't even at the time of hoarding. It wasn't like, I need to add it to my collection it was yeah. just, uh, and you know what? There was a, also a very valid point because you got to think uh, taking bandwidth into consideration, but games were a little smaller back then. I think uh, Valve and Steam as a product of that is a very good example of something that genuinely was ahead of its time, but they stuck with it and now it's a real thing. And this is just like a common thing. You get a game. Can you imagine us like getting game reviews copies? <laughs> if, they had to mail them to like three. oh man yeah oh my god yes or like with special cd keys and i mean like go, going back once upon a time valve was a game company they made they made games Shh. and and not a and not a storefront and Gosh. hardware and stuff Be quiet. so really really changed the course of uh what valve is as a company and yeah like like Vin was saying it's it's certainly strange to look back and think of like there was so much resistance to steam and now it's just de facto PC gaming because they, they, they really they really put their money when their mouth is when they're like piracy is, is a service problem we are going to create a better service that will discourage pirates by creating all these conveniences for you and then Epic Game Store is like how about we just give you a, a store without a shopping cart you want or that any of the other stuff I mean they've made a, yeah, good, yeah. Get a, a very good environment for developers as well um, mm-hmm. I indeed uh, Steam I like it. And yes, I understand somewhere Sweeney is like vibrating right now. Like, nah. <laughs> well, Good. I, I mean, it, it, the vibration has slowed down because now he's got a couple iPhones thrown at him. I, I, so. was, <laughs> I, I was about to say, man, just go sue Apple again. Get it out of your system. See what happens. Right. Um, you're, you're probably going to lose that on appeal anyway. But Steam Dogs, that's all the news. And every time we talk about it, uh, we get random people showing up and saying all kind of fancy things. Yeah, this is uh, this is from uh, Pavel, uh, the expa. And yeah, they're, they're saying uh, a couple people have who've been poking around in the Steam Deck. Um, they 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 have gotten they figured out how the uh, the new UI works. And it's the same shit as the desktop client, except they've uh, there's some new JavaScript that makes things a little more handheld optimized. 
and uh, Val- Valve is not too uh, is not too happy about that. Uh, they they put out a little post in uh, Discord. They're like, yeah, please please don't share all this stuff. The plague man. He wrote, uh, yeah, this was shared in error. Would be appreciated if you didn't share. It. See again, this is Valve. They're like not, they're not like coming after some motherfuckers. They're just like it's a work in progress, man. Don't shut off just quite yet. That'd, that'd be very cool of you. Yeah. Yeah, it, it 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 does make sense though that um like why reinvent the wheel if you have a working Steam client you just need to update the UI a little bit to make it a bit more handheld friendly, um and I'm based based on how these things look I'm pretty sure they're they've been trickling out these updates in the main Steam client for a while like we have the new download page we have the new library page the new setting stuff like it it's all getting trickled out I think we're gonna see it in the main clients eventually. Well, when you say um, that, I immediately thought um you know. I got to guess, like the initial push into the Steam UI, which we were all happily doing laps, like Steam finally is doing a thing. What could we accredit this to? Maybe because Epic's now a game store Mm -hmm. and they're finally, you know, going to compete. Nah, son, Um, that that all gets started when, you know, the Steam dick got out of the idea phase and like, shit, we got to do the interface thing. We can't put it back in the bottle and we're going to actually make these things. And you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Did anyone else Google um, around trying to see if you could find that image? Nope. I did. I did. Guilt. Total guilt. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm just glad they, 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 they decided to go with this instead of like big picture mode because that is uh, that is poo-poo. Mm. Yeah. Like, well, and I think the big problem with the big picture mode just in itself was that there was very little, like they didn't set up an API for developers to really like uh, create a custom big picture mode experience or even let the users have like a very similar uh, a tool set to customize the, the big picture mode for themselves to really know, that, make it their home, if you will. That, 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 that seems like a pretty standard Valve move though of like we're going to provide this thing that you really don't need to interact with that will mm-hmm. enhance quote unquote your existing product offering like a uh, remote play or proton or something like that right yeah. like they, they, they've been doing a lot of that here's this thing you can utilize it requires no additional work on your part so you know mileage may vary but it's there i don't know like yep. i immediately think um sandy when you're talking about customization like do you people not remember myspace like, <laughs> yes, yes. Do, do you want my auto- space was so awesome you're a you're gonna get glitter b you're gonna get auto playing audio that you can't fucking find anywhere and yes. yeah. but you can get into team fortress games with tom from myspace it's gonna and be that's great what y'all yeah, really exactly. want, right? it's gonna be great steam decks All the, the dev kits they're on the move oh. That's true. Yes, they are legitimately out in the wild, especially according to Twitter, because I've seen multiple developers all following the rules. Like, here's a picture of our game running on the Steam Deck, but I'm not going to show you any video of it because I'm following the rules, like Val said. And I think that's pretty nice. Uh, pretty nice. Um, if you're lucky enough to snag one of these, that gives you about three months and some change to get the testing, making sure everything's going to be ready for launch. And, um, yeah. It should be kind of fun to watch because this is going to be a lot of developers' first time tangoing with, you know, hopefully the plan is, the goal is, you take your game, you never mess with Linux, you never mess with Wine, never mess with Proton, willfully ignorant of it, and you just launch it and everything works, which we've seen that post. Like, hey, it just worked and it worked great. Yeah, that was uh, Bennett Foddy from Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy. So how's it going to be? When that's not the experience, do you think we're really going to be seeing developers start digging into it, or it's like, hey, free Steam Deck, neat? I think I think it's going to be a bit of that. There, there, there's certainly uh, there's certainly a lot of developers. Like we we saw Terry post some stuff with uh, VVVV. We saw Bennett Fadi posting some stuff as well. Like there there is the, a desire for especially for indies to have their games run well on it because that's a lot of what people are going to be playing on things that are like fairly small screens, right? Um, mm-hmm games that are better suited for that like your call your call of duty will run on your steam deck but it's not like it's not going to be ideal um Mm -hmm. i don't and and i know given given the fact that it's uh it's proton right i think the porting process is not going to be as extreme as like onboarding to the switch or the playstation or whatever this is basically going to be a test of like what you can get away with on the low settings you know something that i know you can get away with on the low settings ray tracing walk around house simulator 
Oh, yeah. Yes. A solid 60 FPS. Um, this is a video that was posted by an account, which is showing someone play using the Steam Deck IRL. I think this is uh, this is one of the UE4 demos, isn't it? Like one of the dynamic lighting Possibly. walk around. I thought this was uh, one of the Unity demos, mm. like where they mm. did uh, like There's so using some, the some naked build. chick. All right, yeah. Oh, very nice. You can fly. Yeah. But uh, I I had seen on that exact same post that uh, another one of the other developers who was on this uh, this person's team was saying, oh. But can you uh, install Windows from the SS or uh, the SD? And he uh, replied saying, "Well, you could, but Steam o- or Steam OS three seems to run fairly well as is." So. Oh yeah. Well, here and here's the thing: you're not going to get hardware support from Valve no. if you're going to be running Windows on this, right? Like, oh, yeah. good luck. Right. Yeah, spe- especially Windows ten. <laughs> It's Windows it. 11, baby. It's, it's going to be TPM. fun. Oh, <laughs> Listen, I want both of you monsters to keep your fingers crossed that Windows just runs like poo on it so you can pop over to eBay and get the ones that people are like, ah, I can't run the Linux. Here, sell it. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, one can yeah. only hope. One can only hope. But yeah. I hope so. I don't know. Skatebird. It's, it's for the birds. Yes, Skatebird is out. We've we've had the demo for a while and we're like, oh, that's a fun looking skateboarding game. And yeah, uh, it's it's out. The camera is still butt. Apparently they've re- as of like five minutes before we hit record on this, they put out a new update. They're like, yeah, we're fixing the camera, you guys. Um, that, that, that's where a lot of the negative complaints in the reviews are, uh, that then the, the skating is kind of basic, but again, you're, you're a little bird on a skateboard, sk- skateboarding around, right? Like it's great. And you know, we, we don't have an official Tony Hawk game under Linux. So now we have tiny Hawk. Do you, do you think like some of the disconnect was, uh, maybe the developer was rolling out and he's like, man, this, this is goat simulator. Come on. And everyone's like, no, this is a skateboard game. And real serious I, 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 talk. I think, yeah. Cause because people wanted a, sp- a skateboarding game. They didn't necessarily want another Goat Simulator. I, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, people take the skateboarding game seriously. I do want to thank uh, M. Foxdog for dropping that in Discord during the pre pre super shows. And, and mm-hmm. you know, it is single player. It doesn't come cheap. It's 20 bucks. So, I mean, I guess it's uh, updates. Yes, we are planning to fix the camera. Oopsie doo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. That's hilarious. Maybe around the 21st, that'll include accessibility toggle to disable the blur. Ah, oh, I see Pedro's already written in. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So, okay. You know what? I'll play around with it. Um, you guys were talking about uh, the PS2 skating experience. I missed out on all that. I've never really yeah, had access yeah. to a skate. Play, played, a, played a lot of uh, extreme sports. Take Tony Hawk. that back. Do you remember the Blender game made using the Blender game engine? That was a skateboard game, and it didn't work very well. Was that uh, probably that that's, was why, that's why I don't remember it. No, no, this was a serious developer that was one of the it was the other person that said, "I'll take a crack at this Blender game engine development." Not yeah, Blender, and uh, it never really went anywhere. Even Blender was like, "Yeah, know what? Nah." I think the most time I put in a skating game was the tanker. So if, if you bought a copy of Metal Gear Solid Two Substance, they had a bonus mode that was just like a skateboarding mini game. On, on the game level, and you could just, like, fucking grind around and do kickflips and shit. So I ended up okay. spending quite a bit of time in there. Skate burb. I want to play yeah, around with it. I really wish there was the, some, the, like, multiplayer. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd say the, to- biggest, the oh. biggest bomb of a, a game that I played in terms of skateboarding was definitely Tony Hawk's on the, on the Dreamcast back in the day. That was, like, my mm. first experience with a skater game. Never played one ever since. Well, so, yeah, today's your lucky day. You check. can now play it with a skate burb. Yeah. <laughs> skate burb. Adam yeah. RGP. What is this, Ben? It's Turbo oh, Brad. Oh, yes. Turbo Brad. The, yeah, Turbo Brad. The, the Trudeau grad. So this is Adam 2, Trudeau grad. So, Trugador? Yeah. Trugador! Tr- so this is the sequel to the Atom RPG, which came out also on Linux. Um, they didn't see the way that they're advertising the game is that uh, it's a self standalone sequel, but they I, I feel like they should have put Adam two on it, but they didn't. They're like Adam RPG, Trudeau grad. 
Like it's yeah. A, they they have a thing in the in the product description here. They're they're like you should really play Autumn RPG number one if you want to understand the full story. And I mean, okay, that that that's fine and all. You you can have an ongoing story. I would say though, and there doesn't seem to be any indication of this. But if you're gonna re- if you're gonna have like a soft requirement of people paying playing the previous game, I have an option to import your old save from the old game, right? Like. Oh. Absolutely. G- games games Absolutely. used to do that shit all the time. That's how that's how you actually incentivize people to try this out. They're like, oh yeah, you can play like the game on its own, but you miss out all the cool shit because you need to have played the first game in order to like get all the dialogue. Jordan, choices. I have a way better idea. What we do is we put the first one and the second one in a bundle. Okay? Uh, and we call mm. it the two and one edition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. 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 Oh my god. No, but like really, like the UI definitely looks better than the first game. Like I really like the changes from what I've seen from the 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 Let's Play video or the not Let's Play the demo video that they have on the page. Um, the movement looks a little different, but really I'm not noticing too much of a change. It looks like it's still the same system, and uh, a lot of the the mechanics are still there from the first game. So I outside of like maybe visual aesthetics, I don't think there's going to be much of a change here. And story is story. Uh, progression like visually i'm getting some like fallout vibes from it well but, oh, they, for they, sure they, they definitely say fallout is like one of their chief inspirations and mm. by that i mean um, there's literally a dude running around in power armor so yeah. i mean <laughs> it's not it's not like that originated in 100 so. percent origin yes <laughs> that that's that's where it started power armor mm. yes yeah but the power armor is extremely retro yeah, just was- like retro arch yeah. See, look at this motherfucker trying to bring professional segues into this L- bullshit. I know, right? I, I thought I you know. were going full Skeletor there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get you, He Man. Yeah. I will eat your ass. <laughs> so, yeah, Retro Arch coming out of testing finally on Steam. So, originally, one of the problems with the testing uh, for Retro Arch on Steam was that a lot of the online cores weren't. Uh, embedded with it so you had to copy and paste a lot of so if you had the standalone for the desktop you had to copy and paste it over to the steam folder so now a lot of that stuff is embedded now fully functional you can get do your uh, retro achievements from retroachievement.org um, which is some of the achievements are insane Sands. by the way how appropriate. Yeah, How appropriate I know some of the Sandy. videos are just so weird, but I guess they can't show any actual proprietary games. They but can't yeah, show I'll... actual Sandy. So everything's yeah. free, though. I mean, it's free to play. They have all the uh, cores for, you know, Muppin 64, Chronos, PCSX, Stella, same board. For your legitimately dumped copies of the games that you have physical 100%, copies of. 100%. Yep. And, well, I mean, does doesn't this always boil back down to, no matter what the game is, just maintaining version management, up to date software. You know, like even these days yeah. when I download Blender, I install it through Steam because I'm a horrible human being and I hate freedom. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I'm, ha- having RetroArch on Steam is like probably the easiest way to keep it up to date these days, for mm-hmm. sure. Oh, one hundred percent. Like just the the ease of use, the ease of maintaining it, like just keeping everything up to date. It's like why not? And especially with the. Uh, the Steam Deck's coming out. I'm like, this is the perfect oh. addition to add. Oh yeah, that that is that is a massive value add that Valve cannot advertise, or they will get sued <laughs> to yeah, fucking high exactly. hell. What's that? Oh my god! Hi, we're Nintendo. Did you say anything? <laughs> yeah. yeah well, that, exactly. did, you, did you allude at something? Hmm. Oh, oh, what, what's 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 the over under on like the day before the Steam Deck releases? Val or uh, Nintendo files papers against uh, Val. <laughs> yeah, the Steam Deck. <laughs> it's me, Lario. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was hurt. Dude. Oh my god. Um. So we learned some things. Uh, that was an interesting update. Another thing that got an update is Blank Mesa, and. There's also a giveaway, custom Origin PC giveaway. Yay, if you mm. like Orange and custom PCs. But if, if you want a 2060, this is the one way you can get one. Right. Mm. Um, you know, this adds a couple of things, and this is a bunch of stuff about the um, you know PC that you might be able to win. But the one thing I wanted to bring out that is now available on Linux is the workshop. Well, it's been fixed. It works again, and that's good. 
That's fantastic news. I am super excited about that. I'm just kidding. I'm, I, I did this basically, I was reading through this and I'm like, well, that, that goes to prove uh, how, how much I've used the workshop for Black Mesa. A, I just learned that there's a workshop for Black Mesa. B, it works again. <laughs> so I see this as an absolute win. Fun game. It's four ninety nine yeah. right now. There's no reason not to uh, like relive or for me go through Half Life experience the first time. Hey, and now you can hit the escape key and your game won't freeze. Aww. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> well, like I think even when uh, Steam first came out for Linux, I think one of the biggest purchases I bought was that big Valve the Gold bundle, mm. where you get like every Valve game. So that so was I, that was my big purchase. I, I, I had a box copy of Counter Strike that came with all the Gold Source games because they were just oh, right. for each other. <laughs> That's amazing. What game was yeah. it? What was in the orange box? Uh, Portal TF2 uh, and uh, Portal TF. Yeah, Half Life Two Episodes One and Two. Mm. Yes, that was it. That was it. I can say over the years, I, I keep you know kind of taking a peek at the Valve Ultra Mega Bundle, but that's like the two games that. Hard on Linux, the ones I don't own at this point. So eh, yeah. yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna power through it. But Valve does still make games, and more importantly, they keep them up to date. Sometimes, eventually. Yeah, uh, the, this is, this comes from the the TF2 Reddit because you know if <laughs> community pages are about as official as you can hope for these days, there are a lot of updates here. Um, there's uh, an exploit fix for uh, people impersonating other Steam accounts, which Finally. is kind of kind of important a little bit. Um, you can also opt in to see custom sprays because I know a lot of people just have like dicks and titties as their custom sprays. So uh, if you don't want to look at that, you can shut that off. I, 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 apparently, there 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 was one there was one note on on the patch where it's like nature and wildlife preservation measures, and the intrepid TF2 fan base did some digging. Apparently, two trees in a level are now stumps. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious! Ah, <laughs> uh, progression. There we go. I don't know. <laughs> you got to imagine because TF2 is one of those games to where that can very much just be your gaming experience period you know that's your thing mm-hmm. that's what you do you get home you play some tf2 and uh it, it's good that they're keeping it up to date and yeah the wildlife thing threw me off like what what could that possibly mean and that's that's more than likely what it is also it did cause me to learn about uh the listserv at valve which i think i want to claim i really want to claim that i knew about it and i just forgot about it but i'm not 100 percent on that so if you want to get on valve's email list that's how you can do it. All this is going to be in the show notes. So you don't have to remember anything. You just got to remember how to read tomorrow when I get it up and I post them. I can't read though. Reading is hard. Fine. Neither can I. Well, don't read our way out of this segment. Fine. <laughs> I will interpretive dance my way yes. out of this segment. Woo! Coming up next. Uh, do you want a PS5 without a GPU? Fuck yeah. Does, does, does he know? Nope. No. Nope. I told you I was going to do Welcome back, oh. ladies and gentlemen, for the second part of the show. The part where we don't talk about that place or those people that we talked about in the earlier half. So That, that, that is wonderfully descriptive. Thank you. That, it is, yes. It is that section where we talk about the thing, not from the other thing, but from this thing. Listen, man. From it, the new thing. It's always a good idea to leave a little bit of wiggle room. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So if, if you if you want to do the thing, you can over, head on over to uh, <laughs> patreon.com slash thing. Wiggle, no, wiggle. it's patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Become a Patreon. You get some cool stuff. A buck an episode gets you access to the Discord channel. Um, you can also get at that for by uh, subscribing to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. Click that follow button. Click that subscribe button. It's great. Um, but yeah, uh, 250 uh, uh, episode gets you access to the show notes, lets you suggest stories, lets you sort of watch the podcast congeal over the course of the week. Um, if you're a patriot, if you're an executive producer, you get the video feed of the pre pre super chosen custom RSS feed. That's pretty nice. That's an extra hour of, I guess me and Sandy talking about He-Man and pretty comics much. this week for, uh, for your, yeah. your listening pleasure. Yeah. A bunch of other cool stuff we get, you can get from uh, supporting us on Patreon. If you want to buy your way onto the damn show, you absolutely can. It's not what Sandy is. We just kidnapped him and shoved him into a van and brought him here. It's good stuff. That's not a Patreon goal. That's on the that's on the OnlyFans. That's you a say special that. tier. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> we got a we got we got a we got a store store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy your LGC merch to cover your shame or display your shame depending Listen, on what your uh, particular all, kink all, is. All, all I'm saying is, you know, seven, eight t-shirts, great way to cover up a body. Yeah. <laughs> just, just put like nine t-shirts on just on the top half the bottom half very is decomposing. very absorbent lgc t-shirts just throw that on there yeah I, I i have definitely sweat through mine and it held quite a bit of sweat yep uh but fanny pack stickers coffee mugs hoodies all sorts of cool merch for you put it on your body put it on your friend's body put it on your pets i'm sure they would love it surprise shirts yeah you got, you got a pet snake put a shirt on it uh, you can find all this in one place, LinuxGameCast.com. Jordan was saying we got the support button. We got the Patreons. We got the merch. We got the PayPals. We got Wish Zones. If you want to make us say Bitcoin. crazy and wild things, you can pick us up something like that. That's how you end up on this wall that I don't tell anyone how to end up on because we're running out of space. But, uh, yeah, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, that's the thing. I wonder if anybody's ever sent us any. Like, <laughs> send, us, send us some Dogecoin. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. I need to check that live on air. Turns out somebody dropped like 20 bitcoins on us. I'm like, just, uh, good night. Bye. Good night. Yeah, we're, we're, we're done here. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> we're out. With your support, you keep us loud, live, and independent, ad free. But on Twitch, now, something I'm thinking about doing on Twitch is for patrons, definitely executive producers, is um, a separate stream that'll go out to YouTube. And I can set that to ad free and it will obey us. So, uh, mm. yeah, that might be a little spicy okay. thing to throw in there. You know, a little bonus. We, we like to do it because, hey, you know what? If we could do it for free, we would. Unfortunately, this stuff costs money. You know, you're talking to a person who had to spend an entire week to spend 60 bucks of like, do we really need to? Yes, we really need to do a review on that. So, yeah. Keep being awesome. Thank you for your support. It does mean a lot, especially to like, maybe we'll get something that's not plaid for Sandy. <laughs> no, we, we need what? like double plaid. No. We need we need quintuple plaid. Yeah, exactly. It's got to be plaid in plaid. It's uh, a penta plaid. Uh, that's what I'm saying, <laughs> man. It's going to be expensive keeping Pedro buried. He, he's very very wily. I mean, we, can, we, we, we can bury him in nine t-shirts. It should work, right? <laughs> t-shirts. I don't know. Yeah. I like that. So let's Your hot talk. Box. Welcome back to Linux Hardware Cast. Ooh, beat some. Just do that one. PS5 custom chip with restrictions. The Ryzen 4700s desktop kit in the test this has been poorly translated to english yes. from german but they are out but we can't get too excited about them can we jordan no so unless google translate has failed me so this is the 4700s this is uh, essentially the apu that they were sticking in the playstation 5 but not quite uh the gpu is fused off so you are not you are just getting the uh eight cores the 16 threads um, and apparently they've also, they've also affected the performance somewhat of the Zen cores themselves. So you get the PS5 CPU and nothing else. Um, it looks like it's a, it's an all in one board though. So it, it looks like a, like an SOC it has like a single PCIe port. The article recommends some very sad recommendations for graphics cards, but given the availability, I guess maybe a RX 290 is the best you can get on on this board. Well, let's take a look uh, at um, 3D Mark because uh, th this is just like stacking it up against um, Hardware Lux's list. So at the top, eh, you would expect a 5950X, right? Yeah, it's 32 core, whatever fucking yeah, nonsense. We, we're doing that. We got the i9s, Intel's Ryzen 9, 3900. Uh, it's more i9s. Let's see, Ryzen 7 5800. Okay, we're getting into like affordable territory. Um, yeah. 3,700. Which one do you have? I have the 3,900. Ah, so you're way up there. Core i5. We're down to the 10,600Ks. Ryzen 7, 2,700. Remember that. Keep going to Ryzen 5. Uh, that, we can go uh, lower. Core i5, yeah. even lower. And there we are. The, uh, 4,700S oh desktop kit. Uh, okay. I mean, it beats I, a I, Ryzen I, I mean, 5, 3,600. I mean, yeah. If if you're if you're looking for like an SOC with just the CPU, I guess maybe. I, I, uh, it's got a PCIe hole in it, though. It does. <laughs> this 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 is just one hundred percent like binned PS fives. Like these these were they didn't pass the voltage test. The GPUs were bummed. They're just like, fuck it. Here's a board. Have it. <laughs> Do you think it would be worthwhile? The reason I put this in because you know if you're building like um 
you know, like media a server. or something, yeah, like, something yeah. like that. Everyone's always on the lookout for a, you know, an all in one, basically SOC, not really, but you know what I mean? And do this, they have uh, they, they don't have a uh, price on this. No, do they? that that's what this boils down to because this is not an attractive offer until you say 150 bucks. Like, yeah. 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 Cause like if you're building an HTPC, like you're looking at an APU, like I'll, I don't want like for space considerations for mm-hmm. cooling considera- considerations. It's a lot easier. Just have the one SOC and plop it on and you're good to go. Uh, so yeah, I really got to see what this is going to retail at. If, like if it's not just going to be like bulk order for digital signage and shit, right? Like, or that's right. Or, uh, or like uh, industrial control systems or something. Right? Now, wouldn't it be as the kids say dope is all fuck off. Uh, they had dope one AF. with the, uh, GPU, like just going full bore. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm sure <laughs> there, there's some, there's some language in the contract that AMD signed with Sony. They're like, Nope. It's ours. Well, I mean, it has eight yeah. Zen two cores, thirty six computer units of our DNA, so yeah, it, it can display a graphic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the The matter is, like, they 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 just want you to use the CPU. They're like, yeah, this really cool GPU we made. Yeah, don't don't don't, don't yeah. look at it. Negative. Yeah, negative. Don't. We 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 poured a bunch of hot lead on it, so you can't use it. Uh, <laughs> It's still a better love story than um, the Jaguar from last gen. So, hey, yeah. focus on the positive. So uh, you might have noticed, if you've been paying close attention, you squint a little bit, and there's Eagle Eye, that we're streaming right now. I know. What? Come as, I know. Can come as what? a shock to I, some people. Understood. I, 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 was, I was prepared to answer these questions, this, this mysterious uh, thing that might set you back, take you back just a little bit. What I want to talk about is a handy tool that I use to move between these shots. It's a stream dick. Not that stream dick. The other stream, the OG stream dick. The reverse penis. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's from the cat, El Gato. And they make multiple versions. They have ones with like three buttons. And I have one with more than three buttons. I have that version. Not the, uh, wow, you put a lot of buttons on that one version. And controlling it under Linux has never been really that good because there was a stream deck UI program it was Python, all the fun stuff, but you had to use um, XDude to like capture windows with OBS, and it, it caused you to lose focus. And that caused me to dig around for BitFocus Companion, which is what I'm currently using. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig to basically butter robot and power the Steam Deck, controlling it over web, uh, what is it called, OBS WebSocket, so that way I don't lose focus and I can do all the fun stuff. Like, look, there's a Jordan. Ah, and oh! What? There's all three of us. Well, somebody wanted to fix that and kind of update it for a modern era. A new version, a new thing called Stream Deck UI to replace Stream Deck UI. Can't make that up. U- UI Stream Deck? Yo, you me Stream Deck? I don't know, man. Uh, so, you know, this comes in two parts. Uh, if you've ever wanted System D for your dick, uh, it, it's a thing, S- man. System Dick? d yeah. for your dick, baby. Um, people are going to get confused because the current working solution is called... As I said, Stream Deck Dash UI. And, um, you know, Stream Deck UI had some issues with Wayland, so, you know, due to P- PY input, but this might sort some of that nonsense. However, this is done 100% in Go. Now, how much would you pay? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I want somebody to try this. I'm spoiled because BitFocus Companion, another <laughs> open source project, it works like I always dreamed of a Steam Deck working and making use of functions and stuff like that. But if you're not using your Stream Deck for like switching an OBS, if you're using it to launch things and like keyboard hot shortcuts and stuff like that, probably a very, very good thing to look into. And the UI look, looks well enough. I mean, you you can make sense of that, couldn't you, Sandy? Yeah, it's pretty, like it seems pretty straightforward. It's like made in terms of how of it's laid out. It eats your soul. I'm yeah. going to assume that each <laughs> exactly. of those squares is a button. Nah, uh, it's pain. Uh, uh, no, it's just thumbnails. You have to put, you have to create your own thumbnails for the buttons. You do. You do. I, yeah. I, I, I've no, done you, that. You, you, gotta, you gotta pry off your own thumbnails and <laughs> stick them on the device. <laughs> mm. It's, it's like the fun thing with the stream deck. I did that on exactly the one page of the one time and everything else is just text. I'm like, fuck that noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be ridiculous. Good project. Wanted to give it a shout out, but we need There's to, also another good project. to hunt pixelated pics. Mm-hmm. Pixels. Yeah. So one of Pencils. the other awesome projects that's me. out there that's open source. Me, 
<laughs> you love it. Is you love Valorant. It, so Valorant is an open source uh, game, very similar to Cube World. So they just dropped a latest update that added a bunch of things. So like they added a bunch of skill trees. Um, they added some cultists uh, that would attack villages now. And so, which adds all kinds of craziness all in. So I played about two hours last night of this game. This game is pretty awesome. It's got a very breath. As you can see in the video, it's got a very breath of the wild glider situation, which is very cool. Uh, you can do some mining. Um, combat is actually pretty awesome. Very RPG aspect. Uh, I haven't gone online with it yet, so I don't know how well the servers hold up. But uh, so far, I haven't seen any complaints at all. Um, well, I, mean, I know. Seriously, what are you going to do? Ask for a refund? I mean, <laughs> no, <laughs> God, no. But it's actually a really like I always enjoyed the aesthetics of Cube World, and this actually I found as an improvement because there's way more character creation options for this game than there was for Cube World, which I really appreciate. Every time I watch yeah. a video about this, I immediately am like, how is this not a commercial venture? Because the polish, the quality of this is just staggering. Yes, yeah, I agree. It, it is like, and they're, they're constantly like updating and improving stuff. Like the, the cool thing about these updates is they have like a little blog post or like a little mini blog post from like several of the developers describing what they were doing. Um, and like go, going into the, uh, going into the cultist that Stan, Sandy mentioned, there's a bunch of work being done in the combat system to a allow for mass combat. So you can have like multiple NPC factions going at each other and physically changing the world. They're experimenting with uh, terrain persistence. They got a new PvP switch for servers, so if you want to, like, have PvP hours between, like, 2 and 12 and then just build hours for the rest, you can do that. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing they're trying to do is they're trying to mess around with the dungeons so that you can't just bum rush the boss. You're going to, you actually have to engage with the dungeon and get treasure or else you're just going to get your ass stomped. So it's it's good to see that they're tweaking gameplay aspects like that. It's all available on Flathub too, so you don't even need to install dependencies or compile right. it. It's pretty nice. And, you know, watching the video, like when it comes to combat, this game has dodge roll, unlike, I don't know, Dark Alliance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was hilarious. <laughs> Watching you guys play that was hilarious. Where's the dodge? <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, that, I, I had a little shout out at the end of that video for developers. And... <laughs> yeah. No, but like the, the game is, uh, it's very well developed. Uh, the, the audio quality is really good in the game. Uh, the game mechanics are really good. Like you wouldn't even, and the fact that, when you create an account for this game, you're not giving your email, which is like in this day and age, especially for like a free game. Right. For to create an account. That's such a refreshing thing. Yeah. It's so refreshing. In right, this for, day and right. Age. For abuse. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Hey, listen, look at it this way, Sandy. You'll know when it gets popular, when that shit changes. Oh it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's enough pixel game talk for the news. Segment. Let's yeah, let, let's talk about uh, spicy lobsters instead. So okay. fish fight. Uh, it is a game. It's tower tower fish ascension as it looks as it looks like it's a what it's like a it's like a one v one online multiplayer fish murder simulator. And hey, it's open source now. They released it on GitHub. It's on the Apache license or MIT and Apache license. Uh, so you can you can build it. It has online multiplayer which is pretty fucking nice. And yeah, your goal is to be a bunch of large mouth bastards and murder each other, I suppose. I mean, uh, why not? I, I, there, there, there are definitely worse things you could be doing with your time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> True. And, and they, they have a lot of support for like community made weapons and levels and whatnot. So they're trying to, they're trying to actually like cultivate a uh, community hey, around look. this, which is pretty neat. Cargo. I know what it's made with. <laughs> Very um, nice. Yep, rust. Uh, yeah. No, rust. Yeah. Yep. There we go. It's 100% rust because, hey, why not? Oh, yeah. I really like when they take something, you know, to completion or at least as far as they envision the project going. I'm like, here's the source. Go play with it. And I mean, this is not, you need to buy the assets or anything. They've just dumped it. 
on uh, yeah. GitHub, free to play. Every time I see those fish, I just keep thinking, "You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain." Oh, 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 oh fucking, my god! No. The, 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 the singing flounders. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I, the singing uh, basses that the trophy yeah. basses. Mm, yeah, yeah. No, never go bass to mouth, but so. <laughs> never go bass to trout. Um, this is neat. You can I, always I, support them through the Make a Fish Foundation. Yeah, <laughs> got something like this with online multiplayer, land multiplayer, and I, I'm just going to be dragging this out. I mean, I'm going to play around with it and see how it is because I, I need to c- cargo my life some more for no reason. Um, <laughs> draw and guess. Yeah, game. draw and guess game because we can't call it Pictionary. Nope. You could call it Dictionary. Wait. Wait a second. That, no, never mind. Uh, so this is a Draw and Guess Game. It's on GitHub. You can find the links to all this stuff in our show notes, you know, as as, as we often do. And it that's is That's what a picture. straight line looks like when drawn with a mouse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that's what anything looks like when you draw with a mouse. But it, if, you've, if you've ever played Scriblio before, this looks very familiar. It's basically a self-hosted uh, Scriblio client. Uh, you can have people connect to it. You can draw and guess. They have custom word lists. Uh, and it's, it's definitely a thing. It's nice to have an option in case Scriblio goes down. Uh, and yeah, it's all done in the browser. There's a client server model. I don't know why you can't just, uh, hit it in the browser. I'm pretty sure you can as well. Cause you know, it's JavaScript, but yeah, that, that's it. Play some Pictionary. It's open source. It's available. Yeah. And plus like, you know, oh, it's even if I had a client, idea. I'd be changing the word list to, you know, whatever type of dick that people can draw. Like cowboy dick, cactus dick. Spotted I seem dick. to be in a western sure, theme. Yeah, yeah. Old, friend. Who wants to play? You, you, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're, we're just going to stop the podcast right now. Yeah, just yeah exactly. Play we're just, for the past, next, have a good yeah, night, ladies and gentlemen. We're oh, going to be man. playing this for a while. <laughs> we might try it out in the after shows. And that's a neat little project, especially if you don't want to use um, Scribble.io. Is that it? Open source? Yeah. Uh, I don't believe Scribble.io? I don't think uh, it is. But it's free, right? Like, yeah, I, I I just threw this in there because maybe you want to roll your own. Maybe you're trapped on a submarine and you desperately need to play Pictionary yeah. with a person next may, to you. May, without, may, maybe you're in a country that has completely cut off internet and all you have is the thumb drive with stuck the in a submarine, which is horrible yeah. because you're beached and you're like, man, why is the submarine here? Um, okay, <laughs> Quake, Quack. I, I've had words about Quake. Mainly, why did you let him do that to my boy, Microsoft? Mm. Why? They massacred my baby boy. Oh, that's that's rough. But let's talk about itsy bitsy quake. Tiny, so small, quake. So tiny, quake like I should say. A D make of quake, and uh, it's going to fit in just thirteen k of JavaScript. Hmm? Yeah. All right. That's insane. Yeah. Um. This this was part of the uh the JS uh. 13 K competition where they were trying to build uh, JavaScript browser games in under 13 kilobytes. This is definitely one of the more ambitious of the, of the entries. I scrolled through a couple of them and a lot of them are just like basic Mario games or like, um, like Bomberman. nothing like fucking this man. If you're, if you're not watching the video version, Jesus Christ, he's straight up playing right now. Dude, I am I'm <laughs> yeah. just, just live now. Uh, th- <laughs> yeah. this is just like uh, hella impressive. You know, the, uh, the levels are basically made of uh, like access align cubes, which, you know, it's going to simplify your collision detection. And I'm going to end up getting killed to death when I'm playing around. But, um, <laughs> you know, the collision detection and response, it's right on there. Textures are also made using the just procedural generation. And so, but it lacks. Nope. It no longer lacks strafe jumping. Yep. If they fixed it. Okay. Yep. It's been updated. That was clearly the game breaker for people like that, me. That, that probably brought it up Ooh. another kilobyte. So this might I be. dead. This oh, probably man. brought it up to fourteen. <laughs> uh, if 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 you, if you look at the source code, the guy explains that he minified this to high fucking hell to pack this down to uh, thirteen kilobytes. There is a yeah. this is not one hundred percent browser based. There is a C component for the map compiler, so that they can further. Yeah, I mean, not 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 to take away from how impressive this actually fucking is. For 13 kilobytes, I'm just saying, like, there, there, there is definitely, like, some shoving your foot in the garbage can to pack that shit down. There is, on. and <laughs> even, even in its demade state, it's still a better love story than what Night Dive did to my boy. Yeah, so true. <laughs> it's got more of a quick feel to it. I, oh, absolutely. But, yeah. It's, it's kind of sad, though, that it was only just the one level. 
But like, I definitely love what he had already done with the game so far. Like, that's amazing in 13 so, kilobytes. So here's here's the thing, though. Uh, the map maker that this guy uses is actually a Quake map maker. So with the with the C compilation tool that's bundled in here, you can add more maps to this. It makes the game bigger, but you can theoretically import some Quake maps. Can I get support for my Nintendo PowerPad? I mean, yeah. Game controller library in the browser works fine. Oh, fine. Fine. Yep. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. So, yeah, that's going to do it. Coming up next, it's church time, boys. Oh, Going ding to the cathedral. Dong. It's not Fat Albert, it's James Hetfield. Welcome back to the Chairquisition. Uh, this week we're taking a look at Cathedral 3D from Unfinished Games, done on a custom engine. You can pick it up for about five bucks US. What is it? Unique gameplay focused around protecting the chest. Flexible attack system with classic FPS weapon types. Custom game engine crafted using the dark powers of the C programming Ooh. language. Uh, so patch 1.6 added Linux support. Uh, a one year later, almost. So uh, here we are. Let uh, we got We got to thank uh, Unfinished Games and the publisher who was. I am spacing on them right now. Uh, Feardemic for uh, sending us some keys over Curator Connect. So I guess let's get into it. Ven, how did you like Cathedral 3D? Oh man! As soon as I re- well, the clock resets itself, check this out. I, I I had a ball, Pedro. Wait, he's not here. <laughs> You, you had a ball, Pedro? Is it like Wilson from uh, Castaway? I, I had a ball of Pedro. It was delicious. Um, check this out. Uh, you g- give me credit, man. Sandy kind of looks like a, <laughs> like mini Pedro in his current getup. Okay. He does. Sure. Stick with it. Roll with it, baby. How does it run over here on Debian 11 on the Threadripper 1920X, 32 gigajoules of memory RAM, got the NVMEs and all the other fun stuff. Everything launches, makes with a running. Nothing to report there. I mean, window mode is limited to 720p. That's a wee tiny, even on a 43-inch monitor. Just want to say that. Keep and dribble work. As expected, no complaints. Controller support is just an absolute no-go, a hilarious no-go. And really, it's for the best. You know, I tried it with Proton because part of the update with Linux was, hey, we've added controller support. It doesn't work on Linux at all. But with Proton, it's using the Steam Virtual Keyboard thingy, and that is a laughable hot mess. Now, I did have one spike crash. If we're going to talk about stability, there's a lot of reports of this game being hella unstable, but... I only hit that one when I was watching other people's replays because I kind of wanted to know how to hell to play the damn game. This brings us to fun because, uh, yeah, we need to talk about that. Kitty 3D does a really, really bad job of explaining what you need to do. There's like three little screens at the beginning that sort of explain, grab the chest, run. So I had to watch some replays to figure it out. And some people are really, really genuinely good at this game. You, gameplay-wise... Easy to explain. You run around with your Pac-Man chest, you dump it in like a safe spot, and you commence murderating things, and you repeat. See how long you can stay alive. It's kind of like a tower defense game, but the tower is mobile. You can move it around, and the tower also wants snacks constantly. Um, Maybe like you can think of it as an arena FPS with like extra fucky bits thrown in just for good measure. I lasted about 25 minutes on this before tapping out, man. This is just not my gem. Uh... You know what, though? It does look better than the original Ludendum Dare. I think it's 33 entry. Yeah, 33. Save the chest. That was the original name of the prototype they made. But you know what? This thing's priced the same as Devil Daggers. So if it is your cup of chainsaw, if this is your thing, pick it up and add it to your collection of not quite finished, but maybe one day games on Steam. Yeah, I mean, it's a thing. Technically, it works. So there's you two. And as oh, oh shit, who's going? No, it was, it was Sandy. You're you're right. Yeah, keep going. So, as for me on the the Pop OS twenty one oh four, running the the RTX twenty sixty Super with the the i seven ninety seven hundred clocking at four point seven gigahertz, the game ran fine for me. Like uh, it launched as it's supposed to, uh, kind of similar in the same vein of what Ven said. Uh, the, the controllers are, there's no direct input. So if you have any PlayStation controllers, that won't really work out of the box, but it will support, uh, X input out of the box. So be, uh, be aware that you're only probably going to be using the, your Logitech controller or your steam controller or the, 
your Xbox controller. Outside of that, no other controller is going to work. Uh, the gameplay definitely reminds me of um, Unreal Tournament in terms of the movement and uh, the way the camera's laid out. You definitely get that old 90s shooter feel to it. Um, in terms of uh, the frame rates, like the frame rates definitely took a dive once you start hitting the, the second wave of the game because you have like all these enemies just showing up and it's just like, what do I do? What do I do? So you, you got to kite them and run away just so that way you can actually like get the frame rates back and then uh, pretty much put your box somewhere safe and then hope for the best that the frame rates don't die. You try to kill them as fast as you can, but they, they just seem to keep coming back. Um, is it fun? Uh, like, unless you're one of those people that goes out of your way to get the high score. Uh, like, if you're a completionist, I would say, yeah, this could be fun. But for longevity's sake, uh, maybe it's something you could come back to every couple of years just to see where you're at on the high score and try to update it. But outside of that, I don't see this having, like, a longevity sort of uh, gameplay aspect to it. Um yeah, so out of that, I'm definitely only going to give it two chairs for that. 34, 64 bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. It launches out of the box. Um, it hold, uh, it holds uh, 60 FPS at UH, well, full screen. I don't know what the actual <laughs> resolution of it is because your options are 720p window or full screen, which I assume is also a 720p window. Um, I mean, like, yeah, they're, they're going for an old FPS aesthetic and, you know, it certainly looks old. And like Sandy said, I, I ran into that issue where the game just eats shit when there are too many enemies on because by the time wave two rolls around, you're like, fuck, I'm out of ammo and health and I need to go collect some which means I need to kite all the enemies and then the game slows to a crawl. Um, the controls are fine. I didn't even play this with controller because this is supposed to be like an old school quick. Like, how, how are you supposed to play that with a controller and like not be terrible? So I, I was, and it controls do what you think it does. Fun-wise, the game really makes you walk a type rope. On one end, there is no ammo and all the on, on the other end, there is all of the enemies and no ability to respond to enemies. And your goal is to run around with your chest, stuff some crap into it so you can blast more fireballs, rinse, and repeat. I imagine there's a certain rhythm you can get into to, like, make that a little more feasible. I couldn't fucking find it. Um, it's you, Otherwise, you just get overwhelmed if you can't find a good hidey spot for your chest. Um, and, yeah, I, I just find you run out of ammo way too quickly. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's 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 a little too chaotic. You're you're bounding around shooting fireballs and stuff until you run out of ammo. Then you find your chest and then you get ganked because you know you got surrounded by a bunch of fucking dudes. I, I or you jump off the cliffs of the one level that they have because there's there's only one level. You get you get some different colors to this level as time goes on, but it is the one stage, which I guess is good if you need to like max out a high score, but. I don't know. It's, this is not fun for me. I'm not. It's not doing it at all. So I'm gonna give it one chair. It it works up until the point where it doesn't, and then I don't know. If 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 you're if you're not into if you're not into chasing a high score or trying to get all the achievements, I really don't see what what's in here for you. There's not really much of an incentive to move forward beyond better score. Well, if you like the achievements, but it has an um, online letterboard, so that it does have that. I was talking about that last week, and one of the reasons mm -hmm. I went back to it was to try to scooch up just a little bit. But it is puzzling how this game has slowdown issues on our collective hardware. Yeah, I, I think that's just bad, bad engine programming, right? How, how may, dare may, you? Maybe the maybe the dark arts of C, the C programming language, <laughs> are a little too dark for our dear developer. Um, <laughs> outside of that, I mean, if you like devil daggers um pick this up but just be fully aware that that's what it is it's devil daggers but with more castle and um it to sandy's point yeah you really do feel like playing unreal tournament because you're trying to play it on the 486 yeah I think also, also home, homeboy needs a manicure my god come on clean, yeah. clean, <laughs> clean out from under those fingerling, fingernails man like that's Nah. Fingerlings. Fingerlings? <laughs> they call them fingers, but I'd never see them fing. All right. Link is out of here. Oh, there they go. All right. Coming up next, uh, we talk about potatoes. Potontos? Potontos. Potatoes. Potatoes. It's 
the hate mail segment. Yeah. You thought you thought Sandy was going to do it? No, nah, I, I jumped I, in on it. I, I still do. The, you, you do? All right. Yeah. He's not well, getting out that easy. I want my time to flush. Not, uh, all right, then, San, Sandrew Martin, tell us about how to get in touch with us at Linux Gamecast here on this So you go to linuxgamecast.com. You go to the contact. All right. And then, I'm with you so far. <laughs> and from there, you scroll all the way down. There you should see topics. So once you hit the topics, you select the show that you're trying to get in touch with. If you're a developer, you might want to hit LGC weekly. And then from there, you give us the name of your game. Give us an appropriate amount of Steam keys so that way we can properly review your game. Because if you send us only one, we're just going to tell you to shove it. Not really, but we'll probably tell you to shove it. Whatever, I'm special. Um, <laughs> yes, well, but outside I mean, of that, c- c- send Cathedral us your had baby. some problems with that too, well, didn't they? Yeah. Here's here, here's a very very easy way for everyone to look at it. Like I know a lot of people want to do, you know, smart developers and publishers are doing that through like, hey, well, how do you get your game out there? You get people to stream it, right? Mm-hmm. So there's three people streaming on this channel. So increase your odds. Increase your odds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we need to talk about the potatons. Po- potatoes. Po- uh, the potato is that the thing Luke uh, baked and curled inside and covered it with like anchovies and um, gravy. Yes, and Return of the Potatoes. What the f- <laughs> but the, I, I don't. I don't know what kind of baked potatoes you're eating. What, with well, what I'm trying to communicate to the audience is, don't fuck with my baked potatoes, man. I will scar you. <laughs> you, you, you'll put some anchovies on them that's that's for sure well this, this is from Ertain, and they say proton will get my executable when they pry my native game out of my cold dead hands by the way i'm talking about the games that i develop sadly i sometimes have to tap the proton button sad anime face close bracket uh where are we at with that go- man i mean do you think that is just going to become an easier solution of like you know what might as well just keep this thing in windows and do it this way and tap that proton button as opposed to spending the time and, you know, resources and money to, uh, get it up and running natively. What, one thing that definitely occurred to me, uh, this week was that there, there, there's a lot of expertise surrounding direct X and less so, or DX 11 and less so around Vulcan. So at the very least providing a, a graphical, API language that developers can understand is probably better than providing something they don't. Uh, we, I mean, this is why we see like the, the DXVK native, right? Like that, that fulfills a similar role. You still actually have to port your shit over, but that's one less thing you have to worry about. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know though. Like the, the opportunity cost is free, right? Like I give valve a pre-release copy of your game so they can give it to eggy and eggy can figure it out. Right. Like, well, even that to the point that that's not sustainable when you make it known no. that that's a thing, right? I mean that 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 project only works up until the Steam Deck is released. Then it's on you, buddy. Yeah, uh-huh. like the, the the rest of it is going to be like back channel diplomacy, right? Like because we're we're, we're not going to know what the actual like deals that like Warner Brothers or Square or whoever else are actually like engaging in to get their games on deck. And I and I think I think I think definitely for the launch. Definitely for the launch. It's going to be all Proton all the time. Well, to agree with you, to agree with you, I think AAA games, big budget studios, that that deal will be in place because that is in Valve's interest. What I'm thinking more of as the indie developer Mm -hmm. is like, no, get out of here. You go try it yourself. I, I mean, yeah. like that's well, that's the thing, though. Most most uh, most indie developers are building fairly resource low games in stuff like Unity or in Unit, mostly in Unity, which uh, Proton has gotten really really good at running Unity games. Unreal Engine, yeah, and Unreal Engine games as well. Mm-hmm. So, who, but like, where you do have... you file the bug? I mean, do, do you send it to who? It, like, hmm, I found an issue with the Proton not working. Should I fix this? Is that going to break something on the native build or what? I, I I mean yeah it it definitely throws a monkey wrench in the support uh, and that that's kind of the that's kind of the downside we've been talking about for a while of like relying on Proton to actually handle your availability on other uh, other operating systems and what's what's it going to mean when oh well we we can't we can't upgrade to the latest version of Proton because that breaks but on four eleven or whatever it works fine so there there might be like ad- additional like security issues that accrue over time it's. It, it is something that is not sustainable in the long run, but that's not going to stop publishers from trying to make that the one solution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So, well, like the, <clears throat> the point I wanted to get to is like, even in terms of like, say the, the APIs, like there's tons of documentation for uh Vulcan out there right now, which definitely helps like outside of support for Vulcan. No, like I wouldn't like there's scattered little communities across the internet that a lot of devs are like talking to each other about Vulcan, like little things of like, Hey, this is what I figured out today. You know, like uh, doing a bunch of these, throwing in a bunch of these vectors, throwing in a couple of shaders here, you know, like there's tips and tricks, but like, yeah, in terms of support, there definitely needs to be more support within the Vulcan community, at least more centralized support for a, a Vulcan development community. But, um, visual like, V plus plus 2022. <laughs> uh, Isn't that just what V V V V V V is? Just yeah. V is like, hey man, listen, it's a frog fractions of, um, of game, game development. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Up next, we have RK. We, we always talk about wish list and what do you do with a wish list? And we all came up with our own, like, Hey, this is what I use it for. This is what I use it for. And then Pedro died. So he didn't get a word, but, RK writes in wish list, wish zones for Steam. You know, I use my wish list to say when it goes, when I use my wish list to say when it goes to a price I'm willing to pay, I'll get, get it. Otherwise, meh, I only have time. Jesus, this is as bad as my brain is making it. Uh, uh yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. Just, just double checking, man. Make, cause I, I get woozy at the end of the shows. Uh, only time I have done the beat it and refunded. It was metal slug three. Beat it in 40 minutes, not willing to play at the time, pay at the time, uh, 1499 pounds, about 22 us wet stinky caches for a 40 minute game. Had it, had it off been 299. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> you have damaged me, sir, madam. I'm well done. Yeah, well that's- done. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to read that. That's uh, yeah. That's, so. that's like some stop and go traffic for reading comprehension. <laughs> what are they yeah. trying to say? Lassie. <laughs> Timmy's <laughs> stuck in the well. <laughs> well, uh, so so yeah, uh, RK is talking about uh, use, using his wish list or their wish list in a uh, in a similar method to a lot of us, where we put a thing on the wish list and then we get an email when it goes on sale. Because I don't want to pay eighty dollars for a game. I might pay twenty dollars for a game. I might pay ten dollars. I'll definitely pay five dollars for a game. And so there, there's a lot, especially as Linux gamers, we've learned to be patient mm-hmm. because because mm-hmm. so, sometimes there is a native Linux version that comes out with all the DLC as well. So you might as well just grab that instead of having to piece them all together. Uh, but yeah, like that that that, that seems uh, that seems about. Uh, Par for the course, I'd say. As for as for uh, the the beat and refund it, man. Uh, I I don't know if you can beat it in forty minutes, but like I don't know, Metal Slug is one of those like high score chasing games, right? You don't. Yep. It they're they're short games, and the goal is to get like better and better at them and like speed run them and shit, right? And you know, let's just be perfectly clear. I mean, this is we're not like, hey, Valve, you should think about. It. I'm like, we know, we know, and uh, if you play that card too many times, you're going to lose your ability to refund games. Mm-hmm. which Valve doesn't have a problem with. And good luck uh, writing that support email to Valve. Like, hey, yeah, I know I've been treating the refund thing as a rental system, but come on, bro. Come on. Bro, come on. Bro. Just, get the fuck out of here. We're Valve. Yeah. <laughs> so is that going to do it? No. Do, do we feel like we've solved all the problems? Uh, um, Except how to end the show. How are we going to do that? Uh, we, we do it the same way we always do it. By me flying around looking for the damn cursor, Jordan. That's... Like this? <laughs> Cue the well. music. Hey, everybody. Thanks for showing up and hanging out with us for this uh, experience. And thank you, uh, Plaid Shirt, for uh, joining in. It's great. You brought your Sandy along with you, which was always very kind of you. V- very happy to see that. If you want to scream in my direction, just get a hold of me. Also, go check out What Is It? The Shop uh, on YouTube. Yes. Uh, yes. The shop YouTube. Okay. Uh, well, youtube.com slash the shop. Look at that marketing. If you want to get a hold of me, I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter or at Vin on mast.linuxgamecast.com. Come scream at me there. Don't add me as a friend unless you have a profile picture, which it clearly states on my profile because I'll just deny it and be like, next. I'm Jordan Swung. I'm the hottest new release this fall. Oh, and shit. I know you want to add me to your wish list. You could do so on Twitter at TheBurningFool or on Twitch.tv slash BurningFool. And I'm Sandy Martin. 
You can also find me on the Twitterverse at Altamagus. Uh, you can also find me on the YouTubes with the shop. So youtube.com slash the shop. You can also find me on Mastodon at Altamore. At. That's it. Oh, at uh, Linux Social. <laughs> right, because you got to specify that. Smash, yes, smash I that domain, fam. Yes. <laughs> I forgot about that thing. Oh, man. Well, Ugh. it's that time of the week where we try to read the names on the Star Wars scrolling credits thing. Still, yeah. it's still... You know what? At the end of the day, it's still better than Rise of Skywalker. We got to thank our advisors, Omegas and Artharon, and our executive producers. We got Aldia Sparbram, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Tom McAss, Mike G, Mike T, drummer Holy Toast and Gohaku. Down Chicago kicking all that ass with Darkwing and Abstraction. Yeah, our we got Jeff B, Ronaldo. <laughs> wait, wait, Renaud L. Oh, you don't uh, fuck up, son. Ex Machina, Trugzilla. <laughs> Ru- Frostclaw and Dubin, you gotta you're out of practice. Doom two wad, Steve B, yeah. Dirty Dean, Bang, Game of Tron, Andre Mika. Jason B, up. Lord yeah. Maka, Joral, W, Iris, one two one, AJ, Dusk, Brock, Y, Steve B, Freezo. Steve E. Jolly minus nine, oh, Willow Hope, Monica, Alex, AJ. Oh look Frank. at look at look at these fuckers. Look Carl, at these fuck buddies. Mike. Arthur, Linux near all this, Noctilus, and John, and you know him, you love him. E Shop. Get out of here, Frank. I, whenever I see Noctilus, I just think he's Noctila and is just a brown and lighter brown fan. I keep thinking Nosferatu in my head when I see it. <laughs> Did anyone watch Nos like 4A2? Did anyone watch Ladies that one? Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for tonight before the fan gets angry. All right. Yeah, bye bye. Hot box, baby. D- don't make a Hot face box. or anything, Sandy. Just be normal. That was that was normal, I think. Five dudes.